Oh, isn't life dull? What we need is a Sega. That's a games console. Plug me in and things will really live up. Picture a time when the video game industry was like a frontier town, brimming with pioneers trying to forge a new path for the rest to follow. Among these homesteaders was the Sega Master System SMS, a remarkable console that often doesn't get the limelight it deserves but was an undeniable trailblazer in its time. Released in the mid-1980s, the Sega Master System served as a beacon of innovation and creativity, standing as Sega's assertive response to the burgeoning home console market. As the Phoenix rises from ashes, the SMS was Sega's comeback trail after the less impactful SG-1000, showcasing a determination to carve out a significant niche in the gaming world. The SMS was like the plucky underdog in a race dominated by giants, a testament to Sega's chutzpah and technical prowess. Designed not only to contend with but to leapfrog over its competitors, it was a machine that promised to deliver cutting-edge gaming experiences to the living rooms of the young and the young at heart. Aesthetically, the console sported a sleek black chassis with the iconic colorful Sega logo emblazoned on it as if to announce its arrival on the gaming scene with pride. It promised an escape, an adventure, and endless challenges, all packed into cartridges that housed worlds beyond the wildest imaginations of gamers at the time. The introduction of the Sega Master System can be likened to the arrival of a new, stirring melody in an orchestra, bringing with it a unique timbre and a promise to enrich the symphony of the gaming industry. It was Sega's overture, setting the stage for what would become a storied presence in the video game world. Before we begin, if you're new here, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos on retro gaming and tech from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. The early 1980s was the backdrop where the narrative of the Sega Master System began. The tale is incomplete without mentioning the great video game crash of 1983, a cataclysmic event that sent shockwaves through the industry, primarily in North America. It was a time of reckoning, a video game Armageddon that cleared the board for new players and new ideas. Sega, which had cut its teeth on arcade success, was poised to make its move. Their first console, the SG-1000, was modest in impact but laid the groundwork for what was to come. Learning from this initial foray, the Sega Master System emerged as the reincarnation of Sega's previous efforts a console that would address the shortcomings of its predecessors and incorporate features that were ahead of its time. The Sega Master System was engineered to be a powerhouse, a leap forward in terms of graphics and sound capabilities. Sega, with its arcade pedigree, understood the importance of bringing a comparable experience into the home. They armed the Master System with an advanced VDP, short for Video Display Processor, for richer visuals and a sound chip that could belt out more complex tunes than its rivals. It was like bringing an arcade cabinet into your living room, a notion that had gamers' pulses racing with excitement. Sega's marketing strategy for the SMS was equally bold. With Nintendo's tight grip on the market, the Master System was positioned as the premium alternative, offering a wider color palette and more detailed sprites. It was offering a luxury car in a market full of economical models, a bid to attract those yearning for the next level of gaming experience. The Sega Master System was like a Swiss army knife in the realm of 8-bit gaming. It housed a suite of features that were not just meant to compete, but to set new benchmarks. At the core of the Master System's prowess was its Zilog Z80A CPU, a processor that hummed at an impressive 4 MHz. To put that into perspective, this was like having a racehorse in the stables while most competitors were still relying on old workhorses. The CPU was the linchpin that allowed the Master System to handle more complex games with relative ease, making for a more immersive gaming experience. Graphics are the lifeblood of video games, and the Master System's video display processor VDP was its artistic heart, beating out visuals at resolutions up to 256 by 192 pixels. Antiquated by today's standards, but at the time it was like trading a black and white television for a color one. With a palette of 64 colors and the ability to display up to 32 colors on screen simultaneously, the Master System could render vibrant worlds that were inviting and lively. Audio was another front where the Master System aimed to outshine its peers. The console's sound chip, the SN76489, was a maestro, orchestrating a variety of tones and melodies that added depth to the on-screen action. 
In an era when game music was still finding its voice, the Master System's audio capabilities were like a choir amidst a sea of solo performers. The technical specifications of the Sega Master System were not just bullet points on a spec sheet. They were a testament to Sega's philosophy of pushing the envelope as it sought to leapfrog and set new standards for what an 8-bit system should be capable of delivering. But the essence of any gaming console is not captured solely by its hardware, but by the tapestry of games that it offers, the worlds it opens up for players to explore, the challenges it presents, and the stories it tells. The Master System's game catalog was like a mosaic, with each title contributing to a larger picture of adventurous gameplay and vibrant graphics. We can't speak of the Master System's game library without tipping the hat to Alex Kidd in Miracle World. This title was Sega's answer to the platforming craze, headlined by Nintendo's Mario. Alex Kidd was not just a character, he was a statement, with his oversized fist and keen martial arts skills. For many, Alex Kidd became the unofficial mascot of the system, a plucky hero in a realm of giants. Another luminary in the Master System's constellation was Fantasy Star. This game was a pioneering force in the role-playing game RPG genre, offering a sci-fi epic narrative, lush visuals, and a battle system that was ahead of its time. Fantasy Star wasn't just a game, it was a tome of fantasy, a narrative wrapped in 8-bit pixels that whisked players to distant planets and profound adventures. Fantasy Star was such a behemoth that is often credited with laying the foundation for narrative-driven games in the future. The Master System also played host to a variety of arcade ports, thanks to Sega's strong presence in the arcade industry. Games like OutRun, Space Harrier, and Afterburner were not just shrunk down to fit into the living room, but were lovingly recrafted to capture the essence of the arcade experience. For many European and Brazilian gamers, the Master System was the de facto introduction to the Sonic the Hedgehog series, with Sonic the Hedgehog Chaos and other titles featuring the blue blur. Sonic's arrival on the Master System was a coup. It represented a character that would become the face of Sega. Even titles that were not commercial blockbusters like Fantasy Zone and Wonder Boy added to the system's eclectic and revered game catalog. In retrospect, the Master System's game library can be likened to a treasure chest, with each game a unique jewel. Not every piece was a diamond, but each contributed to the trove's overall value and appeal. It's crucial to recognize that the Sega Master System, armed with its impressive arsenal of games and tech, was stepping into an arena where the titans of the industry had already staked their claim. In North America, the Master System faced an uphill battle against a behemoth, the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. Nintendo's console had not only recovered from the great video game crash, but it also established a near monopoly. However, the narrative was starkly different in other parts of the world. In Europe and Brazil, the Master System found fertile ground. Here, it thrived, propelled by a combination of savvy marketing and a game library that resonated with the audience. In these territories, the Master System wasn't just competing, its sales often outpacing those of the NES in several key markets. Brazil deserves special mention, as it became a stronghold for the Master System. Tech Toy, Sega's partner in Brazil, not only distributed the console, but also localized games and even developed unique titles. This strategy turned the Master System into a beloved part of the country's gaming fabric. The Master System's performance on the global stage was far from uniform, however. In Japan, the story was more somber, as the Master System was eclipsed by the Famicom's colossal presence. The Japanese market, with its unique tastes and loyalty to homegrown brands, proved resistant to the Master System's allure. This disparity in market performance also points to the importance of timing and relationships in the gaming industry. The Master System arrived at a time when many consumers had already pledged their allegiance to Nintendo. Moreover, Nintendo's business practices at the time included stringent exclusivity clauses meant that some of the most popular games never appeared on Sega's console, depriving it of potential system sellers. In the grand scheme of things, the Sega Master System's market performance is a narrative of what could have been. A combination of aggressive competition, business politics, and the whims of market timing meant it couldn't manifest its full potential. The Sega Master System's legacy unfolds like a classic novel, gaining recognition and reverence with time. It was the understudy that prepared Sega for its star performance with the Genesis, a silent pioneer that set the stage for the next act in Sega's console saga. This console, like a cult classic film, enjoys a devoted following. 
the gaming community's continued affection for the Master System is reminiscent of vinyl enthusiasts, a blend of nostalgia and appreciation for the craft of yesteryear's gaming. The Master System's technological foresight, especially its advances in 8-bit graphics and sound, was a blueprint for the multifaceted gaming experiences of the future. This console didn't just play games, it played a crucial role in shaping the industry's understanding of international markets, as its unexpected success in Europe and Brazil highlighted the importance of global strategies. The Sega Master System's tale is one not merely of sales and market presence, but of an enduring heritage that has quietly influenced gaming's trajectory. It stands as a testament to innovation and adaptability, a reminder that true impact often resonates beyond the initial echo of launch day. In essence, the Master System reminds us of the gaming industry's complexity. Success isn't solely measured by immediate triumphs, but also by the enduring legacy left for players and developers alike. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more adventures through the tech timeline.